Hi, I'm Noam, hope you are well. This is my channel Trojan Cookie Protocol and in this video we'll be learning how to create our own blockchain, which is a technology that underpins modern cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and we'll be using Java and Eclipse as our IDE. First, let's take a look at what a block actually looks like. A block can be split into two sections, some header information and some data information. The header information contains specific information about the block and previous blocks and the data section contains information such as transactions but this isn't always the case. Inspecting the header section we see it records different types of data. It records the version, timestamp i.e. when the block was created, its hash, so the hash of the block, the hash of the previous block, hash of the Merkle tree and a nonce. I'd recommend you go check out blockchain.info to see what this actually looks like and to get a greater sense of what the header section actually contains. We're ready to create our project, so we'll create a project called blockchain, we'll create a class called block, and then we're going to set um, and declare our information as shown in the header section. So that was version, it was our timestamp, which we're going to store as a date. Let's import that. We're going to uh, create our hash, or we're going to store our hash, we're going to store our previous hash, and the data that we're going to store, or that the block's going to store. So we'll define our constructor, um, initialize these variables. Um, the constructor's actually just going to take uh, three arguments, version, timestamp, and data. Um, the hash, we are going to compute ourselves, so the block is going to compute it when it gets called, or uh, declared, or created as an object. So hash equals to compute hash. Before we define our compute hash method, let's take a look at what hashes are. So hashes are one-way functions. They take in some data and they output some data. This output we call the digest. One hash function that we use is SHA-256. It's a cryptographic hash function, which means it's very difficult to go from um, a digest and to find the uh, input. So if we pass in fluffy gal, uh, it outputs a fixed output of 256 bits. In order to understand this process, or if you don't understand it already, then I advise you to go to freeformatter.com and take a look at the generator there. I'm going to leave the compute hash code for this method online for you to study your own time since I won't be going too in depth about it. Essentially, it just calculates the SHA-256 hash function on some data. So what is this data? So this data is the header information, such as the version, timestamp, previous hash, and data. Of course, we need to do this because we want to set the hash of this block. So as you can see, I'm concatenating the data of uh, the header section. Then I'm going to pass it into uh, the uh, hash function. It's going to be placed in a variable called encoded. Now, this compute hash method is going to do two things. So firstly, it's going to set the hash of the block, and then it's just going to return the hash of this block. Right, now that we're done with this, we can finally declare our getters and setters for the block, and then we are finally done and can start creating our blockchain. Before writing our blockchain, we must ask ourselves, what is blockchain? Well, blockchain is a data structure, and a data structure is a way of organizing and storing data in a particular way. In this case, blockchain uses blocks and links these blocks together. When a block or blockchain is created, it must have a genesis block, and this genesis block is created in the constructor. So the genesis block is the first block ever to be created in a uh, blockchain, and it points to nothing. So when I say it points, well, what do I mean? How are these blocks um, linked together? Well, they're linked by hashes. So remember in the header section, we have hash and the hash of the previous block. If we take a look at block two, we see that our hash 66, say whatever, and then hash of the previous block is 2abd4. Now, if we take a look at block one, we see that the hash of that block is 2abd4. We can then see how these blocks are linked together by using hash of previous block and the hash. Then, if we take a look at block one, we see that the hash of the previous block is 24ef. And looking at block zero's hash, we see that is 24EF. This is at the heart of blockchain linking, and we'll see later the importance when trying to verify the validity of a blockchain. First, we're going to create a class, and we're going to call it blockchain. 
we are going to create a list and this list is going to hold all of our blocks um, and we're going to call it chain we're then going to declare our constructor it's going to take no parameters but we're going to set chain to um, an array list to make it dynamic now when a uh, blockchain uh, is first created um, we need to generate a, um, a genesis block so we're going to add to the chain a genesis block by creating a method called generate genesis which will add it to that block so it will be a ref of return type block we're going to create a new block called genesis we are then going to uh, pass in the relevant information that a block needs such as the version the date and um, some data in this case I'm just using some synthetic data called transactions um, we are then going to set the previous hash to null since uh, genesis uh, uh, block points to nothing and we're going to compute the hash so that the um, uh, uh, hash is set for that block um, we're going to return genesis which is then going to add to the chain we're now going to create a method called add block so that we can add blocks to our chain first it's going to take an argument of uh, which is of, uh, of type block and then we're going to uh, create a new block and set it to that block we're then going to set the previous hash for that block so what are we going to set the previous hash of that block to exactly well we know that chain stores all of the blocks so we need to get the last block added to the chain and get the hash of that last block this is what our previous hash is going to be set to now that we've set the previous hash we now need to compute the hash for that block and once we've done that we can just add it to the chain we're now ready to create a new method which will display the contents of the chain. This means looping through the chain um, and getting all the data for each block and printing them out. So we're going to loop through the chain and we're going to uh, print out a series of information relevant to each block. So we're going to create, uh, we're going to print the block uh, number. So the number would be i. We're going to print the version. Um, of each block we're going to print the previous hash of each block and remember we are doing this because we set our getters and setters we're going to print out the hash of that block um, we're also going to print out the timestamp of each block so when that block was created and last but not least we're just going to create a, um, a line to separate all of these blocks we are now ready to test our block so let's create a new class called test blockchain we are going to create or write down our main method and we're going to create um, uh, an object called blockchain we're going to call it tcp coin and then we're going to create some blocks to add to that blockchain so we'll create three blocks block a block b block c and we're going to pass in the relevant data um, uh, to make that block so that would be again the version date and um, synthetic data uh, so the transactions so we have block A, B, and C. Now we are going to add it to our blockchain. We're then going to display the chain. And as you can see, the chain successfully uh, prints out and it's linked successfully. If we take a look at the previous hash of block three and we take a look at the hash of block two, we can see that they are identical. So this um, tells us um, that the blockchain is working successfully. Let's create another method called get latest block so that we can actually tamper with the blockchain. So we'll just create our method that's going to return a block called get latest block and we're just going to return the last block added on the chain. Now that we've created get latest block, we're going to add it into test blockchain and we're going to tamper with the uh, last block added onto the chain, in this case three. And we're going to um, change the previous hash to A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that means block two um, hash uh, will remain the same, but um, uh, block three does not match it correctly. So we need to now create a method that correctly verifies the, um, the, uh, the validity of the chain. And we need to test two things. Well, first we're going to create a for loop, and then we'll create two if statements. So our method is called um, is valid, and our first if statement checks that computing the hash of the block is equal to the hash stored in that block. So if we compute the hash, we need to check that it's actually equal to the hash stored in that block. And um, if it's not the case, then 
the chain isn't valid because it must be tampered with. The next if statement checks that the previous hash of the block is equal to the computed hash of that block. So if we get the previous hash and then we actually compute um, the hash of the previous block, then they should be equal. If they are not equal, then the chain is not valid. Now we're using return because that helps us break out of the for loop and then if uh, it doesn't break out the for loop then we can just say that the chain is valid. Okay, so let's test this. We're going to check if the chain is valid. The chain is not valid because the previous hash does not meet the hash of block 2, which it should. If we remove that, then the chain becomes valid again. And that's the end of the video. Thank you so, so much for watching. We covered the very basics of blockchain. In fact, we scratched the surface of, of blockchain and hopefully in the upcoming videos, I'll go into proof of works and we'll actually be able to define our own transactions. So please subscribe to this channel and don't forget to follow me on Twitter where well, every Wednesday I'll be telling you guys about my favorite coins and why I think they're going to do really well. So make sure to uh, subscribe, follow me on Twitter and give a like to this video. Thank you so much guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.